glory here this morning. We say thank you Jesus. Somebody say thank you Jesus. Come on somebody give the Lord some praise in the house. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh I know we can do better than that. Let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is the undefeated undisputed champion. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you. And all the glory and all the praise belong to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. You may be seated. Thank you, praise team. You may be seated. Uh, we welcome everybody to GMI Church this morning. We do have two services this morning. So we're going to move this one right along. Uh, it's going to be quick and powerful. You know, so... If you snooze, <laughs> you're going to miss something. You know, so I'm not going to drag this message and come straight to it. Praise the Lord. And after this, we're going to have a Thanksgiving and memorial service. So uh, you stay with us and uh, praise the Lord. I'm going to uh, speak to us for just a little bit this morning. And I want to talk about the tools, the tools for your victory over the devil and the world. Amen? The tools for your victory over the devil and the world. Now, these are for the believers. So, Father, again, we thank you. Because we know that the entrance of your word brings light. And it also gives understanding to the simple. And we ask that that light will shine this morning into our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to just talk to us for a few minutes. Now, the first thing I said a minute ago is that this is for believers. So if you are not quite a believer or you are just straddling the fence, one leg over here and one leg over there, we invite you to come on in. Amen. There's plenty of room at the cross for everybody. Hallelujah to give their lives to Christ. And if you are a believer and there's members of your family that are not yet saved, the Bible says, and ye shall be saved and your house. So you need to stand the gap and believe God for them and share the word of God with them as well. We want everybody to be with the Lord. Amen. 
Now, for believers, I'm going to talk about a few things here today that are the tools for your victory. Now, some of them we already know, and some we gloss over. But let's just put it all together today. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through about 18, it talks about the weapons of our warfare. It says, but how he leads off in this, he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I'm going to be talking about that. It's going to be one of your tools here. I'll talk about that in a bit. Put on the whole armor, he says, so that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. And he talks about all those things that we need to put on. You know, it's like suit up. <laughs> Raise the Lord. The young people will understand that, you know, it's time to suit up. You know, suit up and engage in the fight. Hallelujah. Amen? Don't back away from the devil. Don't back down from the devil. You already got a victory. Hallelujah. That's right. So, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. You know, rulers of the darkness of this world. There's a lot of things out there. Spiritual wickedness in high places. But, we have the victory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, you must take on the whole armor. So it talks about all this armor. Now, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time in this place because there's more that I want to. Uh, most people are familiar with these things, you know, all from the top of your head and so forth. But one element that is common throughout the theme today is, you know, it, somewhere in here I said, above all, taking on the shield of faith. You put on the helmet, you put on the breastplate, you put on the girdle, the belt, you put on the shoes, preparation of the uh, gospel and so forth. You do all these things, you take the sword of the spirit, but then you are above all. You take the shield of faith. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. That shield of faith. Why does it say above all? <laughs> because with that shield, you can quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Hallelujah. And you know, in those days, they used to have a shield, you know. And sometimes they have a shield when they, uh, you know, uh, shoot those arrows, they hide under the shield. Well, some of those Roman soldiers, their own shields were actually larger, built, full-size shield, many inches thick, and go in front of them, and nothing apparently can penetrate. Take on with you the shield of faith by which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. You know, so all the tools that you need, for the most part, your weapons, they are in that chapter of Ephesians 6, verses 10 through about 18. Prayer is there as well. Now, I want to talk about your faith for a little bit. Faith, according to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, it's talking about, look, we need to have victory, you know, over the world. And he said, look, this is a person that overcomes the world. You are born of God. But what is it that you will use to overcome the world? You know, whosoever is born of God, overcometh the world. Now, overcoming the world here is not people, folks. We are not fighting against people. It is the systems of this world. They are designed to weary your faith, to wear you out, to discourage you, to dismay you. That's how the systems of this world are Built. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, but we have an understanding. Pharaoh said, let there be more burdens laid in upon them so that they will not have time to say, you know, he said, these people are idle. They are idle. That's why they said they want to go and worship the Lord. So let there be more burdens laid in upon them. Put more bills on them that they have to pay. Put sickness in their family. Put this. Let the students have more exams. Let everybody do this. Let everybody, <laughs> let them have loans and bills to pay. Those are the systems of this world. But who is he that overcometh the world? He that is born of God. Hallelujah. And what, how are you going to overcome the world? By your faith. You know, Jesus in Luke chapter 18 and verse 8, after he told stories of, you know, how people ought to pray and not to faint, he finally said, when the Son of Man shows up, will he find faith? You know, so that's one of the most critical things that Jesus was talking about. Now, when you are believing God and you are saying the Lord will answer you speedily, you are believing God, the Lord will answer you speedily, 
you know, most people, they quit. Just before, when, just when the answer is around the corner. That's when most people give up and quit. And so Jesus said, well, when the Son of Man finally shows up, will you still be at the point of faith? Will you still be believing? You know, well, you know, faith, as we know, is a substance of things so forth. You know, the evidence of what you have not even yet seen, but you believe the Lord. Now, faith will see the promise of God afar off. But believing is what's going to get you there. So take note of that. Praise the Lord. I want to talk about three powerful tools. As you can see, I'm moving right along here because I want to pray for people at the end too. Three powerful tools that are talked about in Revelation 12 verse 11. And remember, this message is about the tools that you have. I don't have time to go through all the ones in Ephesians 6, but you know, there's a lot there. Here are some more. Here are three more tools that you have here. And I'm going to be talking about one of them in particular. How do they overcome the devil? They overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. That's one of your tools. And a lot of people know how to do this, especially Pentecostals. You know, when you say, if you just want to get them on a roll, when you are praying, just say, I plead the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Pentecostals, they'll wake up. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Everybody says the blood of Jesus as if it's some kind of, you know, chanting. But there's a lot more to it. I don't have time to go into it today, but it's more than just chanting the blood of Jesus. It is what puts the final nail upon the coffin of the devil. Hallelujah. That's right. You know, and so, but there's something else here. Two more things in here. The word of your testimony, I'm going to talk about that in a bit. But also here, they loved not their lives unto the dead. How did Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3, how did they overcome, you know, the threat, the jeopardy, you know, that Nebuchadnezzar put upon them? He said, you know, at the penalty of death, I'm going to give you one more chance. When you hear the music, you know, and all these things, you fall down and worship the image that I've set up, and I'll, I'll let you go. And this young man, you know, they said, look, you know, we know that our God whom we serve. I mean, this is not the thing that we're going to go think about and come and tell you. I could tell you right now, King, that our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Hallelujah. Now, that's number one. That part is non-negotiable. You must know that God is able to deliver you. And not only that, they, were not, did they not only know that God is able they were persuaded that he's able, but they embraced God for the moment. And they said, he will deliver us. Not only that he's able, but that he's also going to do it. Now, most people know that God is able to do whatever, you know. But do you actually embrace the fact for the moment that God is going to do it? Not just that he's able, but that he's going to do it. Now, they said, our God whom we serve is able and is also going to do it. But nevertheless... See, this is the loving the lives not unto death. This is the loving their lives not unto death part. They said, look, even if for some reason, best known to our God, if he chooses to not deliver us and we have to lose our lives, so be it. Let it be known unto you that we still will not bow down. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's not loving your lives unto death. Jesus said, look, any man will save his life Anytime you are ashamed of the Lord, you don't want a little bit of ridicule. I mean, you don't want people to say something against you. I mean, you, you know, you shy away because if you say this, then people are not going to like you. Young people especially, they, they want to be liked all the time. So if you stand up for the Lord, they are not going to like you. You are not going to be popular. You are still loving your life. And Jesus said, if you love your life more than me, you might lose it. As a matter of fact, you will lose it. But if you lose it because of the gospel, you will save it. Hallelujah. And these three boys, they said, look, crank it up ten times. We don't care. We will not deny. Hallelujah. They were sold out for Jesus. And so you can kill us. You can throw us in the fire if you want. But we're not going to bow down. They did not love their lives unto the death. And they got the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, let me quickly move on here. So a few other tools 
that you need for your victory over, I'm still coming to the faith. Now, I will come to one more thing in this Revelation 12, 11. It's called the word of your testimony. I'm going to come to it in a minute. But let me talk to you about your faith posture. These are the tools that you need to overcome the devil and the world. Now, your word of testimony is going to come into play here. But let me describe how that faith posture works. Number one, in the book of Psalm 125, the first two verses, he says, look, as the Lord is round about Jerusalem, so is, I mean, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, you know, so is the Lord round about his people forever. But he talks about one thing there in Psalm 125. He says, you know, those that trust in the Lord. Is there anybody in the back to put up these scriptures? Those that trust in the Lord shall be as Psalm 125, verse 1 and 2. So those that trust in the Lord, not Psalm 1, but Psalm 125. Those that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. Amen? What does that mean? Well, that means you are anchored on the Lord. And your anchor will hold no matter what. You know, storms may come and shake you this way and that way. But you stand steadfast. Unmovable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 14 and 27, My peace I give to you. Not because there will be absence of trouble. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> But in the midst of trouble, I give you my peace to overcome the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, it's all good if we don't have any problems. That's all good. But newsflash, nobody can go through this world without having those problems. <laughs> you will have those mountains and you will have those valleys. Ecclesiastes 7 and 14 explains it. You will have in the days of prosperity, they rejoice. But in the day of adversity, consider that there's a reason why God put the two of them side by side. You're always going to have night and day, darkness and light, mountains and valleys, prosperity and adversity. That's the way it's going to be. But what is your posture? What is your spiritual resilience? You know, can you withstand? I mean, can you take a cheap shot from the devil and then bounce back? Or are you going to stay down for the count? When the devil cheap shot you and knock you down the canvas and the referee is counting seven, <laughs> eight. Some of them will take an eight count, you know, but he's counting. And the devil say, stay down for the count. But over here in your corner, the Holy Ghost says, get up. Get up! For I am the Lord that is with you. <laughs> you know, so the Lord never said you will not get knocked down. You know, but the key is, are you going to get up again and get in the fire? The righteous man falls seven times, but he's going to get up again. Micah chapter 7 and verse 8 says, look, you can knock me down, but I'm not staying down for the count. Hallelujah! Put up that scripture for me, Micah 7 and 8. I know I'm going through very quickly, so they may not be able to catch up. But I have to go quickly because of what we have here. Rejoice not against me, O oh mine enemy. Because when I fall, that is when you strike me down, I will arise again. I'm not going to stay down for the count. Hallelujah. So it's not being knocked down. That's not the end of the story. I've seen some, you know, boxing matches where somebody got knocked down. They came back and won the bout, you know, because they would not stay down for the count. Hallelujah. But once the devil got you down, <laughs> like, ah, I got you right where I want you now. Stay down for the count. But you got some people in your corner say, get up in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, our God is with you to give you the strength to get up. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Now, it would be a wonderful thing if we were never in darkness. 
But let me tell you what the light and darkness is. Light is when you are on the mountain top and you are hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and the clouds open up and you are in communion and step by step, you are locked step with it. Darkness is when you can't hear the voice of God. And there is not a single person in here that can say they won't be through those situations. There will be days when it seems as if God is far away and he's not answering anything. You are praying, you are not, you know. Jesus said, by his stripes, you're already healed. But then why are you sick? Hello? We've already been healed, First Peter 2, 24. It's in the past tense. By his stripes, you were already healed. But then why are we still sick? <laughs> so these things are there. You still will be sick sometimes. But I am the Lord that healeth thee. Hallelujah. Now, Lord never said you won't be sick, but he said, I will heal you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, put your hands together for the Lord for that. Hallelujah. And the psalmist said, bless the Lord, O my soul, Psalm 103. And forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul. <laughs> Everything that's within me, bless the Lord. Because what? He forgiveth all. All what? My iniquities. And he does what? He healeth what? All my diseases. Now, so your posture is another powerful tool. Psalm 34 and verse 19 says, many are the afflictions of the, not few, many. Why should the righteous be afflicted? The righteous should not go through life without any issues because they are righteous already. <laughs> That's a gospel that is not according to the scriptures. So people preach and say, give your life to Christ and everything will be all right. I don't know where they got that one from, but that's not from the Lord. The Lord never said any of those things. In fact, he said in John 16 and, and 33, in this world, you will have tribulations. <laughs> you are going to have all kinds of things come up against you. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world for you. Now, Jesus overcome. But how do you overcome? We know Jesus overcame. So my two tools I'm trying to put in your hands today is how you overcome. Hallelujah. Paul said, look, none of these things move me. You know, in the book of Acts chapter 20, you know, verse 24. And I, I like this man, Paul, because of the way he always likes to uh, say things. You know, there are many things in the Bible that Paul said and people quote. You know, people like Paul will say, oh, we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. And people quote that. That's Paul. A lot of people are ignorant of the devices of the devil. They don't even know what the devil is doing. <laughs> So Paul quoted that, you know, but, but people say, now Paul, this is Paul's testimony. Now, is it your testimony that none of these things will move you? According to Romans chapter 8, he said, look, you know, we are more than conquerors. Are you more than a conqueror? <laughs> he said, look, I don't care whether it is height or depth, whether I'm up or down. He said, look, principalities, powers, angels, life, death, things present, even things to come. You know, I don't care even about things to come. He said, look, none of these things will move me. Hallelujah. None of these things move me. Now that's those that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. They cannot be moved. Now, it's not that these things will come against you. Jesus said, let's go on to the other side. And he got in the boat. And immediately all hell broke loose. Now, just because God said it doesn't mean it's going to be smooth sailing. In fact, that's the reason why the devil is going to come against you. And he's going to come at you in the fury of the tempest. And all the water came <laughs> into the boat. For them to, you know, it's about the thing they are going to sing. But Jesus is in the boat. Hallelujah. As long as the Lord is in the boat, you ain't sinking. Moreover, the Lord already said, let us go over to the other side. And that word will sustain itself. Amen. That's all he said. Whether the storm will blow. And Jesus didn't care that the storm was blowing. Let the storm do its thing. I'm going to the other side. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't have to expend all our spiritual energy all the time on everything. It's not everything you need to pray against. Let the storm do its thing. My spiritual posture is I cannot be moved. Amen. And I will not be moved. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because I'm like the mountains, you know, I'm a, around Jerusalem that cannot be moved. Now, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13, Paul will say something here. He said, look, 
Be strong in the Lord. Stand ye fast in the faith. And quit ye like men. Quit ye doesn't mean give up. Actually, it means the opposite here. It means, look, stop being weak in your minds. Don't be a ping pong for the devil. The devil preach you this way. He beat you that way. I mean, who does the devil think he is? <laughs> you know, we have the power. Jesus said, behold, I give you power over all the power. That's all the power of the enemy. Luke 10 and 19. Not just some, but all the power. Now, Jesus acknowledges that the devil has power. Uh, if you are naive and you think the devil doesn't have power, think again. <laughs> Jesus called him the prince of this world. God knows he has power. But God gave you power over the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So your posture is, you know, in fact, Paul told the same thing to Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3, he said, look, you need to be a rugged man. <laughs> rugged, you know, rugged. Don't just be a weakling. You know, one little thing happens to you, you go crying to the Lord. Be a rugged man. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, you are trained for this moment. You live for this moment. You are ready for this moment. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you are ready. I wish I had more time to tell you more about these things. But, you know, people, you know, those who are in the military and so forth, they are trained for combat. They are not just going in there, waltzing there and so forth like that. In fact, they have some people called special forces. They are trained. They practice. And they get it down to precision. <laughs> And look, we need to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are trained for this moment. I live for the moment. Hallelujah. This moment right here. Because I have the victory in the name of Jesus. Look, you can't do anything about the past. Tomorrow may never come. But right now, right here. When the devil tells you, <laughs> I beat you up yesterday. You say, well, that was then. But this is now. Hallelujah. And if you want some of this, now, never try to fight the devil on his own terms. You're going to lose. You fight on the terms. You, you choose the arena. I'm going to stand right here in the word of God. I'm going to stand here in the blood of Jesus. You want some of this? You begin to use the word of God. Now, the last part of this, because I have only a few minutes left, is the word of your testimony that I want to talk about. I will develop this subject later, even more so. But today, I only have a few minutes before, because of the service that's coming up. What is the word of your testimony? How can you overcome by the word of your testimony? Well, we gave testimony here this morning, but the way most believers, and I've been teaching people this lately, the way most believers use their testimony is only after the fact. After the fact. When the battle is already over, your testimony didn't get you any victory there. You're just testifying to the goodness of the Lord. If your testimony is going to be a tool for your victory, according to Revelation 12 and 11, you need to give that testimony before the victory. That's how you give the testimony. Because that's how you overcome the devil. You give the testimony in advance of the victory. And you say, now you, you guys think I don't have a child, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to change my name today, and next time you call me Abraham, I'm not going to answer. From now on, you call me Abraham. Because that's my testimony. Because I will be the father of nations. And one year goes by. <laughs> Come on now. This nonsense about you being the father of nations. You don't even have a child. How in the world are you going to be father of nations? Look at us. We have all our children around us. We don't even call ourselves that. Say, I will be the father of nations. I don't care whether I take one year, 12 years, 24 years, but I will be the father of nations. Because that's his testimony. How did Jesus use his testimony to come out of that grave? He used to tell them, destroy this temple. And in three days, hallelujah, 
He used his testimony before the event. He did not wait until after the event and say, oh, now I come out of the grave. No. He testified before the victory. Because he said, look, I'm coming out of that grave. You can put this body in the grave, but in three days, in three days, I'm coming out of there. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale, <laughs> so will the son of man. And he began to testify these things. The son of man is going into Jerusalem and will be accosted of the chief priests and elders, and they will kill him, and in three days he will rise again. He was always saying this thing. He was always teaching the disciples how to use their testimony to get the victory. Hallelujah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to wrap it up here, but I'm going to pray for you. Now, so remember, there are many tools that God has given us to win against the devil and against the world. Some of them in Ephesians chapter 6, a lot of them actually, but I love the one that talks about the shield of faith. Because without faith, my goodness, you know also without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. You can't please the Lord. You know, so... You know, you need to know how to use the word of your testimony. When you get an evil report from the doctor, what do you do then? <laughs> you know, the Lord already said you are healed, but you are not healed. It looks like, it looks like you are sick. Doctors may even give up. They say you are dying. <laughs> how are you going to use the word of your testimony? Hallelujah. Well, you need to use your, we do everything we can medically. Medical is good. We do the best they can and so forth like that. But I guarantee you, they can only go so far. And you all know it too. But there is something, hallelujah, about the name of Jesus. It is called the name of Jesus for a reason. And in Philippians chapter five, 2, verses 5 to 9, it says, because of all the things that Jesus did, God gave him a name that is above every name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, so you take the name of Jesus with you. That's one of your tools as well. Remember, as I've taught here and in other places, God's word is his bond. God is bound by his word. And his name is his reputation. <laughs> so, you know, use the name of the Lord as a weapon. You know, not just when you say, you know, I cast you out in the name of the Lord, that's good. But I'm talking about you putting out your testimony there in the name of the Lord, even before the thing happens. Yeah. And you say, now Lord, be jealous for your name. Yeah. I have put your name out there. Let the people of the world know that you are a God that can heal diseases that they say cannot be healed. And you testify to the doctor that I will be healed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Doctor, I appreciate everything you are doing. I know that you are God sent and everything. You know, and I love you for your patience. I love you for everything you are doing. Thank you because you are so caring and so forth. But you know, I also have a secret weapon. <laughs> Hallelujah! My faith! And by faith, I know I'm going to beat this thing. I will overcome this thing. And you start to testify about it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet here this morning. Come on, stand to your feet here this morning. In a few minutes, we are going to cross over to the Thanksgiving service. I wish I had more time today. But I deliberately decided that I'm going to cut it short. So we won't keep you too long today. Because we got a tremendous thing. Here today, Thanksgiving, memorial service, and all that, and afterwards, reception in the banquet hall. So it's going to be a long day. So I'm keeping this short. But I want to pray for you. You know, Samuel said, ah, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord if I cease to pray for the people. So I also say, Lord, every chance I get, whether on the platform, whether in my closet, everywhere, I'm going to pray for the people. <laughs> so today, I want to pray for you as well. Now, remember, you know, there are some people that will know the day of their visitation, and there are others that will not know. You know, Jeremiah said, look, the stalk, the fowls of the air, 
and all of these things. They know their visitation. They know the seasons. But my people, they don't know the visitation of the Lord. Well, ladies and gentlemen, men and brethren, today might be that day for you. Amen. <laughs> There's always one day. And so, today may be your day. Now, if you need prayer, I'm going to make it real quick. Now, I don't have to spend an hour praying in tongues over anybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the Lord, he has already done it. Amen. Even before he started it. <laughs> and those of you who are in this church, you've heard me say that. God doesn't start anything until first he has finished it. He will finish the thing first. Then he will do it. That may be strange to those of you who haven't heard it, but that's why the lamb was slain before the world began. He was already finished before he even did anything. Praise the Lord. You can call him Alpha and Omega, but I like to call him Omega and Alpha. <laughs> because he has already finished it before he even started. All I have to do is now walk in the victory of what he's already done. Now, I'm going to pray for you quickly, so it's not going to take God any time. Because he's already done it. But I want you to know this. That the power of the Lord is present to heal. It's present to heal. And I've been in prayer. Preparing for this moment. You know. And I said, Lord, if anybody. Anybody at all. And you know when we open the building. Say, if they come in here. Raise their hands in this place. Now, if you need prayer. Especially healing. I want you to come quickly. I'm going to pray for you before we go into that other service, you know. And all I want you to do, come out here, raise your hands in this place before the Lord. And I'm going to believe God for you because today may be your day. One man, he came a long time. He kept coming year after year after year in John chapter 5. But there was one day. Somebody say one day. Somebody say one day. <laughs> there was one day. And when he came on that day, it was like, he's still looking for the moving of the waters. He's still looking for all of that. But Jesus said, today, forget about the water. And forget about the angel. Hallelujah. So it's not always about, I mean, maybe the way you thought you are going to be healed is through what the doctors can do. Because this man thought, well, if I can just get in there, when the angel moves the water, then I'll be free. But he couldn't get in there. So maybe the doctors can't do it. <laughs> but I tell you what, there is somebody that's greater than the doctors. What is his name? Jesus. What do you call him? Jesus. What do you call him healer too? Yeah. If he's your healer, I want you to say, you are my healer. Are my healer. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, I sent my word and healed your disease. Now, I am going to pray for you. Now, don't be left out right now. So, if you want this prayer, come closer. Just come in, in this place right here. This is the place where we dedicate for prayer like this. Come inside this place. Yeah. And lift your hands up. Just lift your hands up. And Lord, I remind you, Lord. Now, when we dedicated this place, we said if your people at any time that they have the temp, you know, they have the tempest, they have the hurricane, they have the tornado in their lives, they have the pestilence, they have the mildew, they have the blasting, they have disease, whatever it may be called, at any such time, if they will come into this place and spread their arms before this place, that thou, O oh Lord, will hear from heaven. Amen. Now, spread your arms before the Lord. Yes. Lord, I pray for your people. Unto Shiloh shall the gathering of the people be. You haven't gathered unto me, but you have gathered unto the Lord. But I stand in the message of the Lord. And the Lord said, I am he that confirmed the word of my messenger. Now, Lord, according to your message today, which you put in my mouth to deliver to your people. Let there be healing. Unto you that trust and believe the Lord shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Let him arise. 
with healing over you. Amen. As you have pains and things like that, you may even have what the doctors call an incurable disease. They're just managing your pain. Managing your pain. And they expect that, well, you know, we'll, we'll give you the, we'll, may improve the quality of your life a little bit. But I tell you what, Jesus is not in the process or in the business of managing pain. He is in the process and the business of healing your disease. I sent my word and healed your disease. According to Psalm 105, I mean 107, say the Lord sent his word and he healed them. Lord, you have sent your word here today. Thank you because your people are healed. Now I want you to say, I am healed. I want you to say, I am healed. I want you to say, I am healed. In the name of Jesus. I have my liberty. Jesus has set me free. I have my liberty in him. My liberty. I have my liberty. Jesus has set me free. I have my liberty in him. My liberty. Oh. Help me out, Prissy. Jesus has set me free. I have my liberty. Hey, hey, my liberty. Oh, I have my liberty. Oh, Jesus has set me free. I have my liberty. Hey, 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 my liberty. Oh, I have my liberty. Jesus set me free. I have my liberty. Hey, hey, my liberty. Oh. Jesus has set me free. I am my liberty. In me. My liberty, oh. I am my liberty. Jesus has set me free. I am my liberty. In me. My liberty, oh. I am my liberty. Jesus has set me free. I am my liberty. In me. My liberty, oh. Liberty, oh. I have my liberty. Jesus has set me free. I have my liberty. Hey, my liberty, oh. I have my liberty. Jesus has set me free. I have my liberty. Hey. Hallelujah. Before we do uh, change over to the next service, I see that. Uh, distinguished ushers are passing out the envelopes already. So that reminds me that there should be an offering. All right, so I'll let the priest team do a quick song, and then you can give your offering. The offering baskets are here. You can come and do your offering if you have anything to give. And then right after that, we'll go into the Thanksgiving and memorial service. Take it away, priest team. Praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. We thank you for the offerings brought into the house of the Lord. The Lord bless you, God who causes and gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Multiply your seed sown in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Thank you for your patience. We're about 10 minutes or so behind, but it's all good. We are going to switch the order of the service, and we want to welcome uh, all our guests for the uh, Thanksgiving and Memorial service. Well, Sister Precious will be greeting you and saluting you for that. My role here today is done. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord.